This innocent child, the victim of Jacksonville's gang violence, his face in this picture, now a symbol of a renewed push against violent crime. Study leaders vowing to make our streets safer, and a community rallies in unity, demanding peace. Do you see what it's doing to our communities? I hear these mothers on a daily basis crying. Ms. Belvon Tavis, every time somebody gets killed, it opens up other wounds. In the 31 days of January, the city has had 15 homicides, seven since just last Tuesday. Of all those deadly shootings, the killing of 22-month-old Aiden McClendon last Friday night has galvanized the community. He was in a car with his mother and grandmother when he was hit by bullets in a drive-by shooting. Today, the mayor and police were back in the east side neighborhood where the child was murdered, walking the streets and talking to neighbors. They're hoping someone will come forward with information that will lead to an arrest or arrests in this little boy's death. Crime Stoppers is offering a $20,000 reward. An anti-crime rally was held today at noon. But first, Channel 4's Marcus White is joining us live from the neighborhood where he spoke with some of Aiden McClendon's relatives. Marcus. Tom Mary, we spent the most time speaking with Will Collins. He is a second cousin of Aiden outside of this home today. And we're getting a look for the first time outside of the home where this shooting happened as the crime scene tape has come down in this neighborhood. Will Collins spoke to us after the mayor stopped by his relative's home. Police were also back in the area today, continuing to investigate the shooting, trying to figure out exactly what happened here. They, in fact, spent much of their time looking at any evidence they could gather from the home next door. Aiden's second cousin says that he's glad the mayor came through his neighborhood today. He says it shows that he cares. Now he's just remembering his cousin, whose life was taken far too soon. He uh, loved a child. He was a child that wanted life just like we do. And he, his life was taken from him. And, and, you know, he's just a baby, 22 months old. He don't know nothing. He's just trying to get up to the span of life. And uh, it was taken away from him. So he didn't get an opportunity. But one thing we can remember, though, God above, he's going to live forever. That baby will live again, and he'll live forever with a brand new body. He don't have to worry no more. You see, so it is a loss. It's lost now for the family that we lost him. But for God, it's not lost. Since the crime scene tape has come down in this neighborhood today, we got our first look at some of the bullet holes that hit this home. You can see one of them right now. Also, three Crime Stopper signs have been placed in this neighborhood. It says anyone with information leading up to an arrest in this case could get $3,000 for a reward. But in fact, the reward has been increased to $20,000 in this case. We're going to hear more from Aiden's second cousin coming up all new at 6 o'clock. He tells us how Aiden's mother is doing. Marcus White, Channel 4, your local station. Just like the murder of eight-year-old Drashana Davis almost 10 years ago, the shooting death of Aiden McClendon has sparked outrage in the community. Today, leaders stood side-by-side -side at a rally with people who have been touched directly by violent crime. Channel 4's Kamasi Aaron was there. She spoke with other families who have also lost loved ones to homicide. She's joining us live. Kamasi. I spoke with them and they said this is really hard for them because they're dealing with the loss of their own and then they know that so many other people in this community are dealing with the same thing. So it makes it really difficult for them. They say they want to see the people who are responsible for all of these deaths here at the jail and that's one of the reasons why they came out to that rally today. It hurt my heart to see that baby got killed. Yes. It hurt my heart to see other people get killed. It don't make no sense. You can hear the frustration in Beverly McLean's voice. It's what prompted the leader of Families of Slain Children to bring the community together to figure out how to stop the violence and death in Jacksonville. 15 people have been killed just this year. The death of 22-month-old Aiden McClendon prompted Mayor Lenny Curry to commit $1 million to the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office to pay for overtime for officers. It might not hurt if they're doing something, if they're helping in the community, if they're reaching out and trying to get to know the people in the community and not killing them. McLean and many of the other speakers here favored a focus on prevention instead of more policing. If we truly care about our youth like we say we do, and this is for the politicians in the city, 
you provide our kids with infrastructure and things. It's, it's just very simple. They have nothing to do. The crowd listened to the ideas and even shared some of their own. It was a mixed crowd of people who have seen and read about the violence and others who have felt its impact directly. It's been hard, very hard. Sharon Randolph's brother, Malcolm Davis, was shot and killed last week in a drive-by. She and her sister say they came out to the rally to push for justice, not just for themselves, but for all families affected by violence, especially Aiden's. I fear for that baby. Mama, Grandma, I hope they find closure <laughs> as well as us. And while there may be different ideas of what that road to closure to justice may look like, everyone here agrees it's a road that can't be traveled alone. You can't do it alone, but it takes unity in the community. Each community need to help each other. Now, McLean told me she wants to work with JSO with other city leaders here to come up with real solutions. And she says she believes the time to work on those solutions is before violence, not after. In downtown Jacksonville, Kumasi Aaron, Channel 4, the local station. Our coverage of the city's latest push against violent crime continues on our website, news4jax.com. You will find more about the city's response to the spike in homicides. Look under top stories.